they are coming to interfere with your walk in following Jesus. But I have you to understand this, um, that Jesus, when he speaks to those spirits, um, he breaks their power. He destroys it because of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. So that you can be calm. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon the Lord. For He cares for you. of the wind, the effects of the spirits, and they get afraid. Look at somebody say, Jesus is still in the storm. And he's still saying, be not afraid. <laughs> so the winds had an effect first upon the sea. And because it had an effect upon the sea, it had an effect upon the ship or the boat, right? Now, and when it has an effect upon the boat, get this, it affected the boat's movement. Are you with me? And when those spirits come and affect people, they can affect our movement. You're moving in the vein of God. But because spirits are moving upon people and making them afraid or making them complacent. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say? Then it causes, it, it causes a, a, a certain uh, re reaction there. And so here, this wind was moving upon a calm sea. It just arose. And it moved upon the calm sea. And because of the waves in the sea, right? They affected the ship or the boat, right? And that boat was their cargo, right? The boat was that which was transporting them. And as God, by his spirit, sometimes moves us and leads us, sometimes those winds come to interfere with the movement, with the cargo, with the going of the spirit of God moving our lives. And it causes us sometimes to be afraid sometimes people get complacent they lose sight of what God has told them uh, anybody hear what I'm saying when they lose sight of what God says see, because without a vision um, people cast off restraint they no longer get committed to what God is saying you know what I'm saying so the vision or revelation is to cause us to be committed to what God is saying and so when the winds come you see they affect the movement and when they affect that movement they cause a person to begin to become complacent and begin to figure out what else can I do this ain't working come on somebody give God a praise 
effects of the tempest. Tempest come to affect the sea, affect the people, affect the cargo of the ship. And so here we see Jesus lying there asleep. The, the question would be, how can Jesus be asleep at a time like this? Why is it not affecting him to the point where he could be merciful and at least acknowledge that there's a storm going on? But still, it seemed like he just didn't know what was going on. Anybody ever felt like that? You see, when you pass through things and Jesus seeing appear that he's asleep, you know, certain things can happen. See, now winds are working and their target is to get you off target, get your focus off so that you will not be moving in faith, but you can be moving contrary to faith. Right. And then guess what happens when you start moving contrary to faith? You start speaking just what you're feeling. Y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. You start to speaking what you're feeling. And you see, he must not affect our speech because when he affects our speech, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. As long as I can keep my speech right, God's going to bring me through. It doesn't look like nothing, but he's going to bring me through because he's a covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. And so I can keep on going through. And when it looks contrary, I can keep on as long as my vision is not focused, uh, 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 is not tainted with. As long as I'm still seeing like I'm supposed to see, the winds can't move me. Hallelujah. And so the Lord said the effects of the storm, the effects of the tempest, it caused the sea and the waves to just begin to move and, and move. And, and that, which was, that which was steady, if you will, that which was settled, if you will, that which was going along right smoothly, all of a sudden began to rock a little bit and rock and real because of the movement of the winds hallelujah it began to cause it the boat to just rock a little bit and rock a, and toss and turn and then they couldn't see too good because the waves now had gotten so high it began to obstruct their vision and so the disciples hollered out hello somebody God get up from there we're about to be destroyed Now, I want you to picture Jesus. You know how Jesus is so thoughtful, right? He's so loving. He's so caring. He always has our interests at heart. And I'm not going to let things to get the best of me. And so, you, you know, we have this right idea about Jesus. And here, he was sleeping. Where is your discernment, Jesus? How, why are you not discerning what we're going through? You know we're afraid. I, Lord, I, I'm not understanding you here. So finally, it got the best of them. They went over to where he was. Master, get up. <laughs> get up from there. Don't you understand? Don't you see? We're about to be destroyed here. Can I tell you something? Those situations are not going to destroy you. Not going to happen. Because... Of this great God. Listen, he knows just how much you can take. And the word of God says he will not suffer the righteous to be moved. In other words, what he's saying is that uh, you can get to a point where, in, <coughs> you know, if you tell somebody, if you tell somebody, okay, that's it. I'm out of here. I can't take no more. But you don't mean it. You're trying to get God's attention. Right? Now, y'all probably don't do that, but sometimes that can happen. So, okay, I'm out of here. I've had enough. That's just, that's enough. I'm not taking this anymore. But it's just something to get God's attention. And so God knows when a person saying it but not meaning it, right? In other words, they're not at the end, but they're just saying it, trying to get God to, 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 to get, get some attention. But now, here's the thing. When a person is at their end, they ain't going to say nothing. They're going to make a move 
if something don't happen. That's when God steps in. You hear what I'm saying? That's when God steps in. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's like a man, if he's going to rob the bank, he's not going to run to him. But watch out now, I'm going to rob this man. <laughs> he's not going to do that right. <laughs> oh, he would be crazy to do that, but he's like, <laughs> so God knows when we are at our end. And brother and sisters, let me tell you, every time he's going to rise up and do something. Every time he'll rise up and do something. All of, all of my times following God, uh, there were times when I said, okay, I can't take no more. No, no, no. But I kept right on. I was still in the trial. Why? Because it was like God said, uh-uh. You know, it ain't up to you. And then when I got to my wits end, I began to look somewhere else. I began to try to figure out what I'm going to do now. And I began to take some steps toward that. Then here come God. He began to make himself known now because he knew I had all I could take. Ha, ah, glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, when you had all you can take, you ain't going around telling people nothing. You're making decisions the best you can to get out of it. And the Lord says, I see it. Now it's time for me to get in there and do something now. Hallelujah. They've had it all they can take. And God comes about because he won't allow the righteous to be moved. In other words, he's not going to allow a situation to move us to the point where we can't handle it. I remember this week, this, this condition in my body was going and every time I lay on my back, it was just rattling like just rattling, rattling in my breathing. No amount of prayer and everything. It just took, taking all kinds of medicine until the medicine make you sick. You know? So you, you can't keep that up. Nothing was working. Absolutely nothing was working. And it was, and, and the night before I said, okay, I've had it. That's enough. And I can't take no more of this. And then it kept right on another night. But I got up. I was broken. And I, did, I was searching for another opportunity. So I got to do something. And then here came the Lord. I opened my Bible. I began to read that passage of scripture. And the Holy Spirit. He began to, he just pulls it right out. Whammo. And I'm like, whoa, look at that. All that stuff stopped on the spot. God knew. He knows. Now, what moved me might not move you. You might could go through it for weeks and not be bothered. So, because certain things affect different people, right? But he knows when you've had it. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And Jesus came through and he came through. And as I began to read that passage, all of a sudden, the, the glory of the Lord came. And he just began to take it right out. He stopped the cough and he stopped everything on the spot. <sighs> glory to God. He'll do you good. Hallelujah. He'll do you good. He can. And, and the thing about it, God can take care of you. Have you ever felt like sometimes you're kind of taking care of yourself? You know, I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm, I'm praying. You know, I'm in the word. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to treat people right. And all that. So, you know, basically, there's a lot of stuff going on. But when you understand, you're not even keeping you. It's God keeping it. And so sometimes when God says, well, I better do a little something because I don't want them to start thinking that they, in their strength, they're doing this thing, you know. I, and I appreciate the, the disciplines and all this here, but I, I want them to understand it's not by might now. It's not by power, but it's by my spirit. So he steps in there and he begins to make it right so fast. I said, Lord, have mercy. You really are keeping our lives. By. And brothers and sisters, God's your keeper. If he allows you to go through something, he got your back. He got your back. And he's going to handle it. He's going to keep you through the storm. So now we look at this situation here where the effects of this tempest affected the sea, affected the wind of the people, the boat. And lastly, it affected the disciples. They were afraid. They were afraid. They were literally scared. 
They were not going to make it through the sea. Perhaps they'd been before, but on this occasion, maybe because Jesus was on board, the winds were terrible. And so sometime when you're serving Jesus, you might get some real turbulences. But know this, God's got you. And so it affected the disciples to the point they began to question whether God really cared a lot about them, you know. Have you ever felt like when you're going through some things, God, are you listening? Do you, do you know what's this doing to me? He knows. And the Bible says, God says to Israel, he says, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people. I know their sorrows. But at a certain time, he says, I'm come to deliver them, right? Well, this time is a time of deliverance. This time is a time of restoration. This time that we're in, and the Lord has spoken, so I want you to grab this now. This time is a time of divine deliverance from all curses, from all of the sicknesses and diseases, from mind problems, from mental disorders, from financial oppression. This time and this season is a time of visitation from the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is a time of visitation from the Lord. And not only now, I saw the importance of following Jesus and begin to look at that a little closer. Not only did I see the effects of the tempest, but thirdly, I began to see Jesus speaking to the winds. Now, the sea wasn't the problem. The boat wasn't the problem. The disciples wasn't the problem, right? It was the winds, right? So Jesus began to deal, rebuke the winds and the sea. Now the wind was causing the turbulence in the sea. And so Jesus knows what the real problem is, right? Sometimes there are spiritual forces. Sometimes there are witchcraft spirits. Sometimes there are lying spirits. Sometimes there are spirits of infirmity. Sometimes there are spirits um, that are contrary to your pathway. Sometimes there are hindering spirits, blocking spirits, um, spirits of division. They are coming to interfere with your walk and following Jesus. But I have you to understand this, um, that Jesus, when he speaks to those spirits, um, he breaks their power. He destroys it because of the anointing of God. Hallelujah. So that you can be Calm, so that you can have peace again, where that fear began to rise. When God visited me, it broke that fear. It broke that fear. And God will break some fears today because he's that kind of a friend. He's the one that's guiding your ship, right? Hallelujah. And so Jesus, we see this passage here. Verse 25 says, And that his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We perish. We're being destroyed. And he said unto them, Look at his response. I am so sorry. I am so sorry that this is happening to you. It's going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I just got a little sleepy here. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jesus, because Jesus is very compassionate, right? It's like, oh, I'm sorry, son. You know, I really, I, you know, I just kind of got a little sleepy. I, I really didn't intend for this to happen to you. But uh, so he's like, Lord, wait. So when Jesus gets up now, he says, wait, what, what's the matter with you? <laughs> why are you so fearful? Duh. You know, it's like, Jesus, why you ask me that question? Basically, where Jesus is, the potential of miracles after miracles after miracles are available to us. 
There's a lesson for him to teach his disciples that we're going to be church planners, right? He wanted to show them something. Now, when, I, when I'm with you, there'll be times that there may be a silent period when it seems like nothing is going on, but it doesn't mean I'm not with you now. I'm still with you. And there'll be times when you're not going to understand why things are happening, but I'm still with you, you see. But you've got to understand this about God. His ways are just not our ways, and his, 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 his thoughts are just not our thoughts. And so the disciples are like, don't you care what's happening to us? We're about to be destroyed. It began to affect their trust in God. You know, I can imagine when they were following him, they were probably telling others about following him, you know. But all of a sudden, when the challenge came to them, God, don't you care? It's like, <laughs> but then God said, why are you so afraid? Why are you so fearful? I'm here with you. And then he got up. And he began to rebuke the winds. He said, peace. Be still. He spoke to the storm. Spoke to the winds. Hallelujah. And he says, stop calling this, causing this violence. Stop it. My children are afraid. Stop it. And the whole winds. My God ceased. Now, the disciples had never encountered anything like that, but, but it was necessary for, necessary for them to understand they were not following any ordinary person. Hallelujah. See, it's important for us to understand that when we're following Jesus, we're not following any ordinary person. We're following the Lord of heaven, mm -mm -mm. the captain of our salvation. We're following him because he can do Anything, Hallelujah. And he asked this question. He says, is anything too hard for God? Is anything too hard for God? God is able. And so what God was teaching them now, because they loved God and they wanted to follow him. And so he was teaching them now. He spoke to the winds and he spoke to the sea. Peace be still. And then the Bible says in verse 26, and, the, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey. What are you saying? Now, God's going to speak to some storms in our lives. And it's going to bring about such a calm. Some of the things that Spirit has been doing over the weeks and the months. But God's going to speak to those storms. And speak to those strong spirits that's been interfering with your journey. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. God knows how to do it. He's able to do it. And there's nothing like God speaking to our situation to make, bring about the change. Job said all of my holy times, I'll wait until my change comes. When you look to the Lord and keep looking to God, remember, he knows when you've had all you can deal with. And he's going to change things. And he's right in the midst of changing things for many just, he's, he's right in the midst of changing. And so what, what I believe God's, it's like he said, I'm, I'm reconciling. And your relationship was one way with God, but he's enhancing it through the things that after he's taken you through that, after you've suffered a while, he said he established you right and strengthened you and settled you. So he's, gonna, he's making our relationship uh, closer to him, better, better to, uh, toward one another. He is working in the midst of it. And the things that's troubling you, God will stop it. Because if you could stop it, you would have done it a long time ago. Let's give him thanks. Hallelujah. 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 It's when Jesus speaks to the storms. It's when Jesus speaks to the winds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what makes the difference because his voice carries majesty. His voice is the voice as of a roaring lion. His voice carries thunder. And when God speaks, when God speaks, the Bible says he watches over that word and causes that word to perform its task. So it's when God speaks, not when we speak, not when we want him to speak. It is when God speaks to the winds that things are going to change for us and I believe God is speaking to the winds of our situation 
I believe he's speaking to winds of adversities. I believe that this is the hour of reconciliation where God is breaking yokes in people's lives like never before. And we have every right to expect God to bring about permanent changes in our lives. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you now for speaking to the winds of adversities. Speaking to the winds, Lord, that uh, has been affecting our movement, Lord God. Affecting, oh God, the things that you've said. It's been affecting our visions. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. And we give you praise and, and we give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless the Lord if you will begin to praise God with me. God, we thank you. Oh, the wonderful Lord. Oh, the marvelous Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, looking to Jesus. Hallelujah, the author and perfecter of our faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> and thanking you for it, Lord. And we bless you right now for being the God you are, to being the righteous Savior, for being the Lion of Judah, that when you speak to the winds, ah, glory to God. When you speak to them, God, they must obey. Glory to God. They must obey. You can go all through the Bible, all through the Word of God. You see God speaking to situations and circumstances and bringing about a change. And, and he'll do no less for you and I. Take courage today to know that God is with us and he's on our side. Hallelujah. And he will speak to those adversities, those things that's been happening, that's interfering and causing disturbance and interfering and robbing you and I of our peace. For he speaks peace to us. Peace now to the things that's hindering. Peace by the power of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you now. Let peace flow now. No more worries and stressing over the things that the enemy has been doing. You understand. You know what's going on. And so we ask that you will stretch forth your hands today and minister life, uh, eternal life, uh, to your people, Lord, in a very special way. Oh, God, I thank you. I give you praise. As all your 